Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by former Syracuse basketball player Josh Pace. Pace played at Syracuse from 2002 to 2005. He played a key role on the Syracuse team that won the NCAA championship in 2003. Listen in to my conversation with the most famous glue guy in Syracuse basketball history. How are you, Josh? Hi. How you doing, Mike? Mike, I don't know if I was I, I was a star, but I definitely played my role, and I think I definitely contributed to the program as much as I could in the four years that I was there. Well, we were going to get to this title later on, but just to dispute you a little bit, maybe the mo- the greatest and most valuable glue guy in the history of the program. Yep, I I, I take that uh I take that title with pride. I mean. Um, the type of program that Syracuse is, even before I got there, well established, um, top top program in the country, top program in the nation, and um, even uh, when I got there, and all the talent that we had to be able to establish a role and um, find my place, and even uh, make it to where I'm actually the leader and captain of the team, um, my junior and, se- and senior year, I think that uh, I'm, I'm very proud of that, and I'm very proud of you know what I did lead and what I did do my time at Syracuse. Do you remember when people started tagging you with the with the the label of glue guy and what was your reaction to that? I think it really came around after uh after our championship season. Um we had a really good year obviously my sophomore that was my sophomore year championship season and um I just realized with that type of team that we had our junior year and then our senior year um they were going to need somebody coach was going to need somebody that was going to be able to play their role and keep everybody um, on and off the court, uh, you know, where, the, where we were supposed to be. But um, just jail and make sure uh, on the court, you know, everybody who has their roles, um, you know, I was the one that was going to make sure that everybody kept, uh, kept their momentum and kept, kept, the, uh, kept the, the wins and um, kept the positivity and everything in terms of those teams going in the right direction. So that's, that's kind of what my role was without even being told that. And I think it, it, went, it played the right way. It went the right way for sure. Certainly did in 03. And we're going to get to 03 in a little bit. But first, we got to catch some Syracuse fans up on what you're doing these days. You're the head yep. women's basketball coach at Western New Mexico University. How in the heck does a kid from Griffin, Georgia, end up in Silver City, New Mexico, coaching the women's team? Well, long, well, long story, long story short, well, long story medium. Let's do that. So, um, <laughs> So I was playing professional basketball after I graduated from college, um, had, a, had a decent career, um, didn't, didn't make it to the NBA, had my opportunities and chances for sure, no question, but had a really good solid professional career and um, mainly in New Zealand. So towards the, the back end of my career, I actually played for a, a coach named Ryan Weisenberg and he actually coached the LA Sparks in the WNBA before he came to New Zealand. And um, the team was the Manawatu Jets. That's the team that I played that I played for, and he coached me, and I actually led the league in scoring. That team wasn't good at all before, um, before I got there. But that year we ended up going to the Final Four. I led the league in scoring, and um, same role that I've that I've done that I've had that I had at, at, at Syracuse. I mean, uh, in professional basketball, I think I had to take a, a a higher role in terms of a scoring and you know being the leader of my team. So I, I definitely took that and I uh, did a really good job when it came to that, uh, developing myself even more after my career at Syracuse. But he um. He coached me, and we did really well. I was the captain of the team, the leader of the team, and he told me, you know, down the road, if there's any opportunity that he could that um, that I that I had the opportunity to coach with him, uh, he would he would want to to make that happen and and see what we can do. So um, he ended up leaving after that year, and I ended up going to a, a a couple other other teams in the state in the in the country to play, along with going to Australia to play. But um, he ended up going to Pepperdine University and coaching there, and the women's team. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. I actually um, had a conversation with him a few years after that, and he asked me that I want to coach. And I wasn't necessarily ready to retire yet, but I always knew, like, at the end of the day, this basketball is going to stop bouncing. And everybody used to always tell me over the years, even at Syracuse, you know, you're a leader. You, you might not talk as much as everybody else, but when you say stuff, people listen. And um, I kind of remembered that and paid attention to that, to that in my professional career overseas. Same, same scenario, like every team that I was on, People was like, you'd be a good coach. Like, you know, when you say stuff, people listen and people follow you. So I felt like, okay, this might be the opportunity and time to jump out here and, and retire and start coaching. I wasn't necessarily ready to retire yet, mm-hmm. but 
it was a good opportunity. You know, first job at the Division One women's basketball. And when it comes to coaching men or women, I didn't necessarily have a preference at the end of the day. Um, I wanted to jump out and try it out. And he threw me in the water as soon as I got to Pepperdine. So recruiting coordinator, um, development, player development, you know, and he just threw me out there and I had to figure it out those first two years. So, you know, uh, fast forward two years later, we, we're, we're uh, 22 wins and, you know, I got my feet wet and I know what's going on. I got a, I got a new head coach the last two years at Pepperdine, but, you know, I know what I'm doing now. I, I've seen a program go from bottom all the way to the, you know, to the top and change the whole culture. So, you know, I ended up uh, coming out here last year as the associate head coach. You know, I wanted to take a step into a step up in terms of my title. And um, after that season, you know, the rest is history. I got the job and I'm the head coach now. Head coach Josh Pace. Yep. Yep. It's, it's crazy, but, but it's going well. I mean, um, you know, I'm kind of uh, showing them how to win and how to uh, not necessarily be professionals, but how to look at basketball and approach it the, the right way every day, you know, along with handling your business in the classroom. And um, these young ladies here, they're doing a good job. The culture's changed. We just finished the uh, semester up with a 3.56 GPA, which is really high. My GPA was never that high at Syracuse, so I'm really proud <laughs> of them about that. Um, yep, yep. I got I got a really good group, a really good group of parents, and we're 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 going in the right direction. Absolutely. That's amazing. Now, Silver City, New Mexico. I got to be honest. That's one place on the map I've never been. What did you know about Western New Mexico University and Silver City, New Mexico, before you got there? I didn't know I didn't know much about it, but the thing about playing professional basketball overseas is you're gonna be at some point at some point in your career you're gonna be in one of these little small cities uh, playing and you know um, outside of your normal cult culture that you're used to and I've done that I've been in Finland I played in Finland I played in Estonia I played in Townsville Australia I played in Nelson New Zealand I I played all over I've, I've been all over the world so I've been in these little small cities before so I wasn't concerned about um, how small the city is, but it is a really small city. The closest airport is El Paso. No, the closest major airport is El Paso, about two and a half hours away. And then uh, Tucson, Arizona, uh, about three hours away. We do have a small airport here, a small private airport that I use every now and then, but um, we're in the middle of nowhere. But um, the kids and the student athletes that I have, they want to go to class and they want to get better on the court. And those are the type of student athletes that we're recruiting in. Um, it's moving in the right direction. But you're right. It's, it's definitely a small city known for mining um, in the middle. It's beautiful, though. It's a beautiful city. It's hot in the summertime, and we get a little bit of snow in the wintertime. But beautiful city, but we are definitely in the middle of nowhere for sure. Well, let me see here. It's not the first time you took a chance and, and kind of pulled up stakes and, and, and went somewhere new and different for you. When you were coming out of high school, you, you were down in, in, in Georgia, which is not an area Syracuse re has recruited much before or, or since, to be honest. Um, right, right. But you came, right. you took a chance and you came to Syracuse. Yeah, how did you end up at SU from, from, from Georgia? Couple, couple, uh, couple stories with that. Well, I, I, I contribute that to Coach Weaver, Troy Weaver, the, the general manager at Detroit. The, the, the Detroit Pistons now, who's doing really well, obviously, with his career. But um, I actually played against him in Washington, D.C. when he was coaching and running the D.C. Assault. He had a really good team, a, a really good team. Uh, I think all those, all of his uh, players went to some high-level college somewhere. And I played really good against him, and I think he remembered me, obviously. Um, so down the road when he got the job, uh, you know, he, he remembered me. Obviously, I was making noise down here in Georgia, really good player in high school, and, you know, that kind of – played out how that played out but I just told this story not too long ago when I was in, when I was nine or ten I actually in our recreate in our recreational league in Griffin Georgia I actually played for a team called the Orange Man we were orange and blue now back back I have, I've only told this story one time and it was it was earlier this week so um or last week but like I, I was on this Orange Man team not knowing that this was the Syracuse Orange it was it was Syracuse obviously Orange Man Syracuse I didn't know that when I was nine or ten and I actually won a championship in that league uh, when I was younger. So fast forward, not too far, not too long, but, you know, I'm developing as a player and, and as a person, and I'm seeing basketball in these other states. So I see the Big East on TV not too long after that, a few years after that, and I'm like, okay. And I'm paying attention to it. So I'm seeing the Georgetowns and the Syracuse and UConn and how prolific this Big East conference is, and I'm, like, really paying attention to it. So as I get older, and I'm in high school now playing and being recruited by all the schools in the SEC, ACC conferences. 
I don't want to stay in Georgia. I don't want to go to Florida. All my friends are going to these, you know, top schools in the, in in our in our part of the country, and I kind of wanted to do something different. So, you know, I kind of remember playing for the Orange Men, then seeing the Big East Big East on uh, TV all the time. Now I, I'm familiar with Bayheim. I'm familiar with Coach Bayheim. I'm familiar with the conference. You know, I'm becoming a really good basketball player. It kind of just played itself out. Kind of just played itself out so, along with uh, going against Coach Weaver. Troy Weaver, the general manager at Detroit Pistons when I was in AAU travel ball, playing against them. So you come to SU. I think your recruiting class also included guys like Hakeem Warwick and Craig Forth, right? Yes, yes. Billy right. Edelman. Yeah. Uh, so now your first mm-hmm. year is NIT. And the next season, your sophomore year, they bring in this kid named Carmelo Anthony. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what your first impression was of Carmelo? Well, I got, I'll, I'll tell you this story. So, so my, our freshman year when we got in, uh, we went to uh, Archibald, Archibald Gymnasium. And the seniors and juniors of our team that year, you know, they kind of told us, like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We, we're going to put the freshmen and the younger players up against the seniors, up against the experienced players, so we can just play and get rep and, you know, see what we got going on. And um, I just think they really wanted to see what we look like, you know, play against us, but let us know, like, look, you know, we know y'all can play, but you're going to you're gonna have to figure it out, play your role you know, and see how this thing goes. So, you know, we did well, me, Hakeem, Billy, Craig, everybody, we did well, played well um, against the upperclassmen. And we kind of had an idea, okay, we know what everybody does. We know what we're going to get from everybody. We're going to be a really good team, which we were for the most part that year. Uh, NIT, that's not our standards, but, you know, there's some teams in the con- in the country that wouldn't mind going to the NIT, but definitely not our standards. We had a, we had a, we had an up and down year that year. Okay, let's fast forward to the next year when Carmelo comes. Carmelo, GMAC, that crew. Um, same type of scenario. I'm still I'm still a younger player, um, but you know, Quet Dwayne is our senior. Um, so same scenario. You know, we're gonna we're gonna play against the newcomers and you know, uh, kind of see what we got. We gave them the same kind of story, same kind of spiel. Um, by the end of that day, from playing in Archibald, I came away with a few different things. For one, I've never seen anybody that big, um, that that's bigger than you, better than you, faster than you, shoot better, more athletic, better basketball IQ. Um, just, just, I've never, I've never seen nothing like that before at that point in my life in terms of basketball. Yeah. So coming up, coming out of that day, that experience, I think he was out of shape too. He wasn't even, um, he wasn't even in shape at that time, but just seeing what he's capable, capable of, um, the class that, well, the, the team that we had uh, before that, uh, incoming class came in, we, we realized like, okay, we're going to have to follow this dude. He, he's that good. And we really got an opportunity with the talent that we have to really make some noise. This is even before we got in the gym with, co- with the coaching staff and, you know, established chemistry. We kind of we kind of saw that just from when he first stepped on campus and playing against him that first day. He, he was that good. I, I, I've never seen anything. I had never seen anything like him up until that point. What about the six-foot-tall kid from Scranton? What did you think of Jerry McNamara? Jerry, Jerry was a surprise. He came with these high accolades. Jerry ended up being one of my better friends, too, over the years, obviously. Um, but even in college, when we were in college. But he was a surprise. We knew he was good, and we saw his highlights and everything. But um, just the, the type of swag that he had and the way that he could fit in and um, just his mentality, I think um, that, that actually showed as well. So um, we knew we were going to be really good with those two. Um, I didn't know we were going to win a championship that year, and I knew we had a small window because we everybody knew. I mean, let's just be real. Everybody, everybody knew Melo was only going to be there one year. We were even surprised that he came um, for that one year. But then again, like I said, like for, for him to come in with those accolades and then, you know, to get into the gym with him before the season started, we wanted to test it out and see if he was really like that, and he was really like that. And GMAC held his own too. So um, two prolific freshmen. We didn't know they were going to be that good, but once we seen them play, um, we we were really uh, confident that we were going to have a really good season, even before getting on the on the court with the coaches. And I know that's hard to believe, but that's that's kind of how we were thinking after those first couple of days. And they were even better people off the floor, so that was a really good team. Obviously, really really good team. And as you can see, it's not easy winning championships in the NCAA. All right, so. You think you're going to be good. The freshmen are going to be good, but they're freshmen still. Um, mm-hmm. you, you weren't sure if you're going to win a national title. If, was there a point in that season where you won a game or, or came off of something and, and you're like, you know what, 
but we have the ability to win a national title with this crew. I think um, we, we like, honestly, we really felt like that the whole year, but we did have some adversity as well. I think, um, dang, that was a long time ago. That was a <laughs> long time ago. But I think after the Notre Dame home game, I forget the date, um, I remember Jerry, Jerry hitting a couple shots in the corner, three or maybe a three at the end toward the end of the game that put us up or put us way up. I don't remember. But I think after that game is when we realized, like, okay, like, we 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 knew we had a chance, but kind of where we are now and the chemistry and where everything is and um, how everything is going, we really got a chance. So we just got to stay focused. Uh, everybody, this is when roles were being played, were being um, – everybody kind of knew their roles for the most part. I kind of knew my role too. Uh, whenever, I, whenever I was out there, I was ready to go and to contribute. And um, by the time we got to the tournament, we were we were ready. Like, we were ready. Even without the coaches, we were ready. Like, we were gelling together. We were hanging out off the court together. Um, we knew that G Mac and Mello was going to make the right play when we were on the floor. You know, we we were jail. We were ready. We were, we were ready to go. Outside of UConn, we didn't really struggle with any teams like that either. So, you know, we were hoping to catch UConn again in the tournament so we could beat them because I think they beat us twice that year, two or three times twice. Um, but outside of that, we wasn't we wasn't we wasn't even concerned or or scared of anybody. You know, one thing I always thought about that season that was really important for you guys is when Billy Edlin was uh, not eligible for like the first 12, I think it was 12 games of the season, um, mm-hmm. it gave you more of a chance to play right. uh, and right. and play more than you had as a freshman. And I thought that was critical co- to the team because then when Billy came back, you had earned Coach Beheim's trust. And right. the team got that much deeper. And, and, and having you – as a guy there, um, and I, I'm not sure if that would have happened if Billy had been eligible right from the get-go. I mean, do you remember that? Do you share that? Um, do you share that feeling, or or am I a little off? No, I, I agree with you, uh, me, um, me, and a few other players on the team. But I just think um, that lets you know how deep our and how special our class was the year before, before even Melo came, that class was really special. Um, we had that type of talent. And um, I got my opportunities during the year. And Billy's the type of player, even if he's not, a, even if, he, if he's not there, when he gets there and get, a, a, some, get some repetition, get a couple practices, the way he plays, a natural leader on the floor, natural PG. So he was going to fit in regardless. So, um, and, and even with Hakeem uh, taking another step that year and uh, Craig taking another step, I, that, that, was, that, that was a really special class that year before. And then to get Melo's class, G Max class as well, Matt Gorman to get that class as well. Um, it was just about gelling and and be, trying to be patient. I had my moments where I was frustrated because I remember coach all the time after games on on the press conference saying I got to figure out a way to get this kid in the game. And I'm like, coach, well, just put me in the game then. But but I also understand um, the dynamics of what we were trying to achieve and um, the type of different talent that we had on that team. So you know, I had my frustrating moments that year. But it's weird because once we got into that tournament, coach let me rock out and let me play. So, you know, I guess things played out how they were supposed to play out. You know, one of those games where you played a vital role in the tournament, um, you and, and another guy off the bench, Jeremy McNeil, was Oklahoma mm-hmm. State in the second round. I mean, this tournament run almost ended before it started. They were up on you big early. Absolutely. And let me shout out to my guy, Jeremy McNeil, big perm. Got to shout him out. That's my boy. Um, but yeah, that, that 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 that's also a, a testament to the depth and the type of team that we had. Um, Jerry 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 wasn't playing well that game early on. Carmelo wasn't playing well early that game, and then we've had different opportunities during the season. Maybe not that many, but it was a couple opportunities where where me and Billy got a chance to be like, "Hey, let's go! It's our time! Let's get it!" And that was one of those times. I don't, I don't think I scored a lot of points that first half, but I remember making a lot of plays. Um, I scored a few points, made a lot of plays on both ends. Um, Billy did his thing. Uh, G Mac did his thing. Hakeem, Jeremy was blocking shots. Craig was was good. You know, everybody. Uh, uh, Quest made some shots. And um, by the time we got to that second half, you know, it it was we were ready to go. Um, that was a real. That obviously was the most important game of the tournament because you're right. We had the opportunity to be dead in the water, but how confident we were. That bench was so confident. You know. For one, for, for me, it's like it's an opportunity to, to show Bayham that I'm supposed to be out here, to show Coach Bayham. I got to stop saying that, that I'm supposed to be out here anyway. And um, for me and Billy just to come in and just be free and play, 
you know, and 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 our our guys believed in us, believed in me and him. So um, it wasn't no thing. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't even a pressure situation for us. It was the opportunity to get out there and do what we do, and uh, hold the fort down until you know our guys were ready to come out and do their thing. So absolutely. You know, I remember. Uh, you know, the the one thing I remember about you offensively is the floater. You were like mm-hmm. the king of the floater. You know, when and how did you develop that shot and to be able to make it with, with such a high percentage? Well, when I was younger, I, was always, I always had to play up in the higher leagues and with older players. And even in my, in my neighborhood where, I was, where I'm from, I had to play with the older guys because guys my age, I, I, I was better than them. So, um, but when I, once I got to the point to where I'm playing these older guys or playing in, uh, you know, playing in these leagues, these little travel ball leagues that I'm playing in AAU or whatever it is where I'm playing up, these guys are bigger and taller. So I had to figure out a way, you know, when I got into the paint or when I got into that, that middle area to where I couldn't get a jump shot off to, to, uh, to still be efficient and be effective scoring. So I used to work on that shot. I used to be outside in my yard, in the front yard, on my, on my hoop that I had working on that shot, working on that shot every day to the point to where it got really comfortable. Then I got to the point to where I got in games and I was ready and willing to even try it out and it was falling. So, um, I put time and effort into that shot. I didn't know it was going to turn out to be as effective as it was and um, still even to this day remembered as it is, you know, but uh, but that, that's a testament. So to anybody younger that hit, that ends up watching this, you know, you got to put your work in with your game to get it to where you want it. And, you know, it, it, it will it will play out for you. But I, I put a lot of time and effort into that shot. So by the time I got to college, it was it was really natural to me. And even as a professional, I made some money off that shot as well. <laughs> um, before we leave 03 what are, what are your biggest memories of that championship game against Kansas um, just, just, how high, just how high level it was the final four in general just playing in front of all those people um, and uh, just being in that situation like I said obviously coach, coach has been to a, lot of, a few final fours it's not easy to get to final fours that's the only final four that I had been to as a, as a player but uh, just to be at that level and to be in that situation and, you know, have the whole world looking at you. I mean, we, we were ready for it, though. We weren't scared of the moment at all. We were ready for that moment. And that was, I think that was our time. But that was the highest level of basketball college-wise, obviously, um, that I played that I played at. And, he, and then even as a professional, I've been in some, some pretty amazing uh, gyms and moments and won some championships. But that Final Four moment was very special. And um, like I said, that team was special. That team was very special to be able to uh, – to be able to deal with all the, the the stress and you know the the, the pressure that comes with that in that setting, um, uh, Coach Beheim had a really good team. They did a really good job of recruiting uh, th- th- that that specific uh, team, that specific uh, uh, time frame for us to gel together and to, to accomplish what we accomplished. Because that was a very very special team. I mean, I. I, I, I I reiterate how good that team was, even if we didn't win the championship, but obviously the championship uh, finalizes things when it comes to that conversation. That post-game celebration nearly ended Carmelo's pro career and maybe his life. He was at the he, he deserved it. He deserved it. I mean, that, that, was a natural, that was a natural moment. I mean, of course, at the end of the day, uh, after a game like that, after a championship, that we make it, we make it to the uh, to the final, to the you know to the end end of all end. Everybody's going to jump on him because he was the obviously, you know, the main component in terms of you know player, uh, you know, along with the other team. But he he was the main component of that team. Um, very down to earth guy, humble guy. He was he was good off the off the floor. And I got another story that I want to tell about him. This is a true story. Um, so we we got the same class together, right? So. At this point now, another story before I tell that story. Freshman year, I come into I come to Syracuse. I come in the summertime when I do my visit. You know, I come in the summertime. It's not snowing yet. But as soon as it starts snowing, where I'm from in Griffin, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm from, we get one or two inches of snow. Everything is canceled. No school, no stores closed, everything. So I had this conversation with the staff. I know that I have to go to class in the snow, but, you know, if the snow is up to here, I'm looking out the window like, Oh, we good. Days canceled. I'm going back to sleep. So I go to sleep for a couple hours, two or three hours. I wake up and look at my phone. I got like 30 missed calls. And I'm like, what's going on? So I answer. And the coaches are like, you know, were you in class today? I was like, nah, coach, it's out, you know, snowing outside. We, you know, like, you got to go to class in the snow when it's like that. I'm like, what? <laughs> really? 
So that was a little, that was a shock to me. I kind of got over that shock and, and, you know, got it together. You know, fast forward to this next year. So me and Carmelo, we got the same class, right? So he picks me up every day for school. Um, we go park, we walk to class. So one day, this one day, um, I don't want to go to class. I mean, it's snowing. I'm, I'm achy. I don't feel good. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going. So he, uh, he pulls up a few times. He pulls up to pick me up. And I'm like, okay. Um, he calls me like, hey, bring some lotion out. You know, we, I need some lotion. Bring some lotion out. I'm like, I don't even want to go to class. But this is the thing. This guy right here, he, he going to be a, dra- a lottery pick next year. So if he can get up, get in his car and go to class, you got to go to class. You know, so that, that that's just a funny story um, that, that I look back at it like he was picking me up going to class. He really he had to go to class, obviously, take care of his business because he's a student athlete. But in my head, I'm like, this guy don't even really got to go to class. and He's going. So I got to make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do as well. <laughs> hey, we, uh, I got to ask you about one of your other teammates, Hakeem Warwick. Yep. <sighs> Favorite dunks for Hakeem? Well, first and foremost, Hakeem, Hakeem uh, those four years there and even now, uh, but definitely when we were there, he was my best friend. We came in together. Um, we had we went through adversity together. We did everything together. So to see uh, what he accomplished, you know, we both had some adversity that freshman year. We had some homesick moments. We had some moments to where it's like, hey, I don't know if we want to be here. I want to be here. I don't know if I want to be here either. You know, that's how, that's how it is when you're a competitor and you want to be on the floor. Um, but to see what he accomplished, over those four years and see his development, I was his hardest critic. You know, I used to get on to him about missing the rebound and not blocking the shot, you know, that type of stuff. But offensively, you know, I knew what he was going to be. Um, but just to see how he developed and what he turned out to be, I'm very proud. I'm really proud of him. You know, I never had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to, to say that. Um, but um, he was my best friend, very proud of what he accomplished. And obviously that Notre Dame dunk that he had, that was that our senior year? That had to be our senior year. Or, he just jumped straight up and dunked on somebody. I got to look it up. But um, it was a Notre Dame dunk. He did a little pump fake, pump fake. And it was this, it was a guy on him up in his face. And he just jumped straight up and dunked on him. It was so nasty. Like, their crowd went crazy. So that was that was my favorite dunk. And the I second remember favorite that dunk was, Yeah, I did. Yep. It was like yep. his I, arms just I, extended I, over I, the guy. I, I, just, I, think, I think that was our senior year. It was either our senior or junior year, but I think our senior year. And obviously, everybody's favorite dunk, I'm going to assume, is that Texas dunk in the Final Four. Um, over Royal Ivy. Um, that was a crazy dunk as well. Yeah, everybody remembers that one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty amazing. Um, are you going to be mad at me if I bring up Vermont? Nah, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> we can have that conversation. <laughs> we can have that conversation. <laughs> i tell you what. I mean, Vermont just played out of their minds. Yep. And it just seemed like that was like probably the worst game you guys had played all year long. Yeah, it, it, it was really a bad game. I really thought that team, your senior year team, I thought that was a really good team that had a chance to do some things in the tournament. Absolutely, that that was a really good team. Uh, we we came into we came into that uh that tournament with some really good uh really good momentum, really good confidence. I think we won the the Big East tournament, so um, we were in a really good place. Um, I don't think Hakeem had a really good game either, but I think um I don't know if GMAC had a necessarily a good game as well, but. That was a really that that was that was a moment to where I normally if Hakeem's not playing well, Jerry's not playing well, I have my good game. So I didn't have my normal good game either in general, but being that those two weren't playing well, usually that's my moment to step up. I didn't have my my moment either, my game either. So um that was on us that was on us three for the most part, I think, you know, but it is what it is. You live and you learn, you you have your experiences. Um and um, we we definitely had our Jerry had his his four years, you know. Obviously, he a legend. Hakeem's a legend. His four years there, my four years there, I did okay too. So, you know, we won a championship. We didn't necessarily uh, that our senior year, me and Hakeem Craig senior year, we didn't necessarily get as far as we wanted to. Um, but uh, we don't have anything to hold our heads down about at all. I don't think Vermont played out of their mind. Um, but me, Jerry. Uh, and Hakeem, we're the leaders of that team that year. We didn't we didn't play good that game, but we, we all grew from it and moved forward. Um, but um, shout out to Vermont. You know that that was the that's still I think their most proud moment. I think you know so you know to each his own, to each his own. 
Yeah, it was. And I, I, mean, it was, I know it's a sad way to end your career, but you know what? You're being modest here. You were a little more than okay. I mean, even though you weren't even known as the guy who scored a lot, I think you still ended up with over 900 points in your career. I, I had a solid career. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying I didn't. I, I, I'm not saying I didn't. I'm just, I'm just saying um, I, I played my role uh, to the best of my ability, um, guy. you know, and, and, and having, and having a, and having a Jerry McNamara and a Carmelo Anthony and a Hakeem Ward, uh, in the forefront, you know, I, I was okay with that. And I was okay with doing my thing in the background of them, you know, cause I knew that at the end of the day, down the road, I'm still going to get recognized for, for what I do because I play hard, um, on both ends of the floor. I take care of my business off the court and, um, you know, you know, everybody respects and love, you know, what I brought to the table. I think I won the, the sportsmanship award in the Big East that year as well. So, you know, there are some things that I am proud of and are and, and accomplished. And I think they definitely fit my personality and my game. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. And I know Syracuse fans still uh, hold you near and dear to their hearts. Uh, you, you have a special place in, in Syracuse history as a, yep. as a yep. big time part of that national championship team. And, and now head coach of the Western New Mexico University Mustangs. And we wish you Absolutely. well out there. And I appreciate it. And I, and I will do this. When I was playing professionally overseas and traveling, I was gone six, seven months out the year. So I didn't get that many. I, 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 was, I came back to Syracuse a few times. But I didn't get that many opportunities to come back because I was busy. But I will make sure over these next, you know, such and such amount of years that I do a good job of coming there and being seen and saying hello to everybody and, you know, doing stuff in the community as well. Got to make sure I do that. Got to hold my hold my end up to that as well. So, absolutely. We'd love to see you out here real soon, Josh. And good luck to absolutely. you out there in, in uh, at Western New Mexico, okay? Thanks for joining Thank me on the podcast. It. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Anytime you need me, Mike, I'm here. So. All right, dude. Yes, sir.